Hey everyone, I just want to do a quick run through on how to make uh, architectural glass in Blender. Uh, now what I mean by architectural glass is I mean um, glass that you would use for like an interior or an exterior shot, uh, mostly interior, uh, while you're working with Blender. Now there is just a straight up like a glass material that you can apply um, right away in Blender, but that's actually not the best thing to use because while I find it actually does look fairly accurate, um, it has some features that kind of it will add more noise because if light passes through it then blender has a harder time kind of um trying to figure out where all those light rays are actually going which then leads to more noise um so um i believe this uh trick was made by the blender guru um but i just kind of want to make it down into a um condensed video so that someone is just looking for glass they can say okay that's exactly how it's done um and i don't completely understand the math behind how this works but uh, I will show you how to do it anyways. So the first thing that we're going to do, uh, I also have everything uh, showing up down in the bottom left here if you don't know what I'm clicking, but I'll try and uh, say everything out loud as well. So we're going to go Shift A. Uh, I'm going to make a cube. I'm going to go up to the scale, and I'm going to lock the scale there uh, just because I'm going to leave it at this height. Actually, I'm going to make it slightly bigger. Uh, but yeah, so then I'm just going to scale it out a little bit. I like to um, apply the transform by hitting control A, go to all transformations. Uh, and then what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna go over to the modifiers, make sure that that's selected. Uh, and then I'm gonna go into the uh, solidify and maybe just put like five inches. Okay, so I'll apply that um, and that should be good. So all we did there is just kind of give a little bit of uh, thickness to the cube. I'm gonna hit shift right click to place my cursor. Uh, right on the wall. And then I'm going to go down to create. Now I have uh, Archipack installed. I think everyone has that by default. Um, so I'm not going to get into that in this tutorial, but if you have any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them uh, below the video. Um, so I'm going to go to Archipack window and I'm going to choose this uh, 180 uh, flat three. Uh, maybe I'll scale this up a little bit. I'll drag this down and then I'm going to hit my um, the uh, period key on my number pad just so that it locks onto this. Uh, and I'm actually going to spin this around. And I think, hopefully this isn't a little too big. Okay, so that's perfect. Um, and then if we get to this point now, I'm going to hit um, Shift A again. I'm going to make a cube. I'm going to scale it down a little bit just because I want it to really only go uh, where the frames are here. So I'm going to go right there. Uh, actually, probably drag this up. So I'm going to hit G Z. I'm going to click here and I'm going to hit G X. And I think that that should be about good enough. So now that I have this created, I'm going to click back on the wall. I'm going to add another modifier. That's a Boolean. Uh, and so then what we're going to do is we're going to pick the eyedropper here. I'm going to click on the cube and you should see like a little square pop up here. Um, that's because now um, since our the outside walls here, like the box is still selected, um, we're actually cutting a hole into it with this cube. And that's why the lines show up because now there's a hole there. So it's like the edge of the, uh, the walls. So uh, I'm going to apply this. I'm going to click on the cube and delete it. Now, it may not look like that did anything, but what actually happened is we've removed all the wall there. Um, I guess this isn't really the best way of seeing it, but you can see that these lines here, um, these lines are because Blender needs to have like lines going to a hole if it's on a face. It can't just like if it's if you're familiar with SketchUp, you can't just kind of like draw um, a rectangle on a face. Um, Blender kind of has to have these lines. So, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into material preview mode uh, and we should just kind of see this. I'm going to click on the window now and I'm going to go down to the uh, material properties here, the beach ball looking thing. And then I'm going to find window glass. I'm going to click on the use nodes and then I'm going to click on shading. So uh, first thing I would do is I'm going to delete the principled uh, BSDF. You can technically make glass with this, but I do not like using it because I don't know if there's like a bug with it or something like that, but the glass, no matter how many light bounces you have, it always comes up as like this almost like black tint. Um, and I'm not really sure how to fix that. Like it's almost just like the light bounces aren't affecting it. So maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I, I just don't use this one uh, for glass. So what we're gonna do though, is we are gonna hit shift A or search. We're gonna add in a light path. Then we're gonna hit shift A again. I'm gonna get a math node. Then I'm gonna do a 
mix shader. Then I'm going to just type in glass. So we get a glass BSDF. And then I'm also going to add in a transparent. So as I kind of said, I don't completely understand how they all interact with each other to make this work. But more or less what's going to happen is you're going to have a glass that to us, it looks completely like glass. You're going to have reflections on it. It's see-through, except the way that or Blender is going to interpret um, this object is that it's going to just let the light pass right through it. And it's not going to try all these really complex calculations, which means you're going to have less noise, uh, which means that you technically have to do less samples until you can get a uh, that perfect uh, render. So it'll just save you time. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the shadow ray and the diffuse ray. And we're just going to plug these into values. Uh, make sure that when you add the math node as well, it's set to add. Um, by default, that's what it is. But just in case something happens, this is you do need the add. Uh, and so then the value of this is going to go into the factor or <clears throat> the factor here. And then we're going to get the glass. We're going to go into this shader and we're going to take the transparent. We're going to put in this one and then we're going to take the mix shaders output and put it into the material output. Now, um, I'm not sure why this happens, but sometimes when uh, I make a glass node, the roughness is set to 0.5. Um, for this, I recommend that it's set to like, I just set it to zero, but I guess you could have a little bit of roughness if you wanted. Um, and then what you should see is if you're in material preview mode, uh, it'll look something like this. Um, now, I know that my business partner, when he uh, does this sometimes, his glass is see-through in material preview mode. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I think it's a simple thing you can flip on, but um, I don't, I've never really needed to do that. So I just leave it um, on this default. Um, now, if I go into rendered mode, this is what we're going to see. So we can see through this. It may not look like it, but we are actually seeing outside. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add an HDRI in so that we can see that better. Uh, I'm going to go to environment texture. Uh, I did download a, uh, an HDRI from um, HDRI Haven in my last Blender video. So I can uh, put a link to that below. Uh, oh, no, we want, uh, I think it was called Kiera. So if I click that now, Right. So I think I might, uh, I'm going to rotate this a little bit just so we can see it better. So I'm going to go to world, um, I'm going to go mapping texture, uh, generated, I think it is. Oops. And then I'm going to rotate this like 90. Uh, I just want to get it to an area that you can see the, yeah, there we go. So I just want the light to be coming through the window. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit strong, but you kind of get the point. Um, the light is now passing through and this looks like normal glass. And if you actually see, um, this is why this trick is so powerful is because Lumion or <laughs> Blender is having a really easy time with getting the light rays through the glass. Um, but now it's not going to uh, cause all the noise that it normally would. Um, and just as a little example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in a quick um, eye mesh um, model here. So if I go to, uh, I'll go category. I made my own categories. If anyone is wondering why this looks a little bit different. So I'll just grab like, um, this, I'll just append this in. Oh, oh, wait, I wanted a dining set. Sorry. Uh, dining, I'll do full sets. It's just taking a second to, uh, load in. I think it's because I'm in rendered mode. Um, Whatever, this should work. I'll just drop this in. Yeah, sorry, this is take, take a second. What I just want to show is that, like, once I uh, bring this in, I'm just going to move this over. And then um, you can see in the glass, it might be a little bit weird to see. Um, but yeah, so you can see all of the reflections uh, that are in the scene in the glass. And it just looks a lot more realistic. Um, this is the best way to do architectural glass, uh, in my opinion. And I, uh, yeah, I just want to show people that like in one quick video, how to do that, because I think that this is actually an extremely important, um, thing to do if you're new at uh, blender, especially for Archviz, because you can really, really have a lot of, uh, noise in your scenes by not doing this. And um, yeah, this just helps speed that stuff up. So uh, I hope that this was a uh, helpful tutorial. As I mentioned, I didn't come up with this, um, like this method of doing things. I believe that um, the Blender guru, he actually came up with this because um, he has had a couple of glass hacks over the years 
Um, and so, um, yeah, I, if it, all the credit goes to him for that, I just kind of wanted to bring it into one condensed video. Um, he talked about it in his, uh, beginner's, uh, guide to architecture, I think it was called. Uh, so I'll leave a link to his video below. Uh, and if you are brand new to, uh, Blender Archviz, I really recommend that you check that out. Um, if you are uh, already subscribed to the channel, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, if you're not subscribed, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that uh, subscribe button, help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And um, for now, I will see you guys later and in the next video. Have a good one.